Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. This part of the session is about OD or organization development in not for profit organizations and uh, social enterprises. Do you remember we discussed about the social enterprises in the session 2 of this course? So, it is like a flashback on the social enterprises and you might remember this table we used to distinguish the social enterprises with the mainstream business organizations or CSR or voluntary organizations or not for profit organizations and public services. If you focus on the social enterprises, uh, we you might recall that we talked about its special feature that uh, it is the ethical investment in the fair trade practices heavily biased towards the social inclusion or the environmental objectives. Uh, social enterprises work on the green fair trade, social inclusion, uh, these are the central aspect of its brands and social goals are primary for these organizations. And not for profit organizations, they primarily run on donations, charity or giving by uh, other actors in the society. They lot of NPOs work on volunteering uh, for specific social projects. And uh, the giving culture is uh, the most important social value claim they have. We are going to look at how the concepts of OD are applicable and how they become different in comparison to the commercial organizations, how they become different in the social enterprises and NPOs or not for profit organizations. These are the key references we are going to use for this part of the session. If we look at the current times, we see a very important trend and that trend is that we are living in the age which is which the bound where the boundaries of government, non-profit and business sectors are blurring. Blurring in terms of what? Uh, they are blurring in terms of their orientation towards most more cost effective and sustainable ways of doing things they all are supposed to be more innovative and are expected to address the social problems that deliver socially important goods uh, such as basic education and health care etcetera. If we look at NPOs and SEs closely, we see that they share a very important objective with OD. They all promote the importance of organizational virtuousness. Organizational virtuousness is a concept that includes the key attributes of social betterment. So, in terms of the inclination towards organizational virtuousness, NPOs, SEs are common with the enterprise of OD. We also see a trend in these days is that government agencies and non-profit organizations as well as SEs, they are adopting the frameworks, methods and strategies from business world in hopes of improving their performance. Business world has been successful in terms of making their processes efficient, more objective oriented, more value adding in terms of the economic value add application of the notions and concepts of the economy of scale and economy of scope etcetera. Many of these concepts are relevant and they can be relevant for the SEs and NPOs as well as well as in the government organizations also. So, that is why we see the practices and processes generally developed in the for profit organization and most of the part of this course. Uh, and the techniques and approaches of the OD we discussed in this course uh, were actually developed in 
for profit organizations or commercial organizations many of those things are applicable in the SEs and NPOs as well and there is a greater recognition in SEs and NPOs to use those concepts and approaches. The few concepts uh, of SE, NPO and OD which are common are social impact, they all work for greater change and they all embrace the value for sustainability or sustainable development. So, in this context we need to look at how the OD processes and techniques are applicable in the field of NPOs and SEs. Having said that, we also need to recognize that there is a difference between OD in commercial organizations or for profit organizations and not for profit organizations or social enterprises. The first definition is in the definition of scaling itself. Scaling in commercial organization is about selling uh, product to product or services to more number of people or increasing the number of the uses of the product or services. Whereas, the, the scaling in the context of SE and NPO are about increasing the depth and width of the social impact along with the financial uh, sufficiency uh, to ensure the sustainability. Since the very objective is different, we need to recognize that how we do the central planning and the approach uh, towards uh, realizing the long term objective will be different in SE, NPOs and that of commercial organizations. So, strategic planning process will be done has to be done with a different perspective, different with different objectives in commercial organizations and uh, SE and NPOs. Secondly, SE and NPO are generally less hierarchical in comparison to their uh, commercial organizations uh, counterparts. They are also low in formal structure and processes. Generally, we see less of documentation and regimentation of the processes in SCs and NPO. They are likely to be more flexible and generally more uh, centralized uh, due to limited resources. We also see one common feature in SC and NPO is presence of charismatic uh, leader. In large number of NPOs and SCs, we see a leader who is generally the founder or the most important leader. Uh, in those organizations and his charisma or her charisma and commitment is such that uh, it drives the, uh, the processes and systems and it inspires people to join that organization and people work in those organizations uh, in under the influence, under the positive influence of uh, this leader. So, naturally the processes and systems become little more centralized in the SCs and NPOs in comparison to the commercial organizations. So, that also we need to consider while applying the OD processes and approaches and techniques in the in these organizations. Naturally, because of these features uh, the OD interventions can focus on enhancing the free flow of communication and value clarification. They are uh, very important OD, they can be very important OD interventions in uh, non -pro not for profit organizations, non industrial sector. Reconnecting with purpose can also be a very important OD interventions in SEs and NPO. Why? Because organization members in SEs and NPOs primarily join the organization for, for their pursuit towards meaning and purpose in their work. And financial rewards are not the most important points of uh, comparison for their uh, career choices when they join uh, SE or NPOs. So, that also needs to be uh, taken into account and because of this feature uh, reconnecting with the purpose of the organization is a very important uh, can be very important OD intervention for uh, these kind of organizations. Having said that, 
we also need to recognize that many concepts of uh, OD which are applicable in the commercial organizations can be useful in SEs and NPOs. Now, we will look at the different steps in the OD process and how they are similar or different in uh, SEs and NPOs in comparison to commercial organizations. First point of our OD engagement or OD process is diagnosis. You might remember that in the diagnosis, we do uh, uh, pastel analysis uh, for the commercial organizations, uh, but the major input in the diagnostic model for a commercial organization is the industry or market it is operating. Whereas, uh, the major input for the NPOs and SE is the society or the community within which they operate. So, we need to take into the consideration to greater depth about a stakeholders expectation, what are the power struggles of the different bit among the different stakeholders, how is the resource flow and constraints in the society or community to carry out the work uh, by SEs and NPOs. So, those become those factors become very important in the uh, diagnostics process of these organizations. Another important point which is similar and different in SEs and NPO in comparison to the commercial organization is about the how about how do we assess the effectiveness of those organizations. Uh, we know that effectiveness of the organizations in commercial organizations we look at in terms of the process efficiency, the cost saving or uh, productivity profitability, market share etcetera. In SEs and NPOs, they need to specifically identify what are their measures for effectiveness. That can be the spread of their social impact, that can be the depth of difference they make to uh, the stakeholders or the, uh, or the constituencies they work with or that can be the environmental impact and so on and so forth. So, the effectiveness and variety of effectiveness uh, will be huge when we look at the uh, SEs and NPOs uh, and that needs to be taken care of when we design the OD intervention for them. There are few things which as a concept can be very useful and those concepts were primarily developed in the commercial organizations, but they can be very useful for the uh, SEs and NPOs. Uh, these are core competencies and the dynamic capability. Society is changing, technology is changing and there are many other change factors which we discussed in the very first session of this course. So, SEs also need to build their dynamic capabilities. They also need to keep enhancing, keep changing the competencies and their capabilities on which they operate organization design, the factors related to organization design are also very important for SEs and NPOs as they are important for the commercial organizations. SEs and NPOs also need to look at the different aspects, different options and possibilities of designing their organization. You might remember we looked at many conventional and non-conventional of organization design in the previous session. We talked about divisional structure, product based structure, function based structure, matrix organization structure. We also looked at some innovative structures like team based structure or a virtual organization based structure or boundary less organization structure or team. So, these are the different kind of organization designs available with the advent of technology and increasing globalization there is a possibilities emerging for the SCs and NPOs also to try out the innovative organization structure, which can be uh, either of these what we discussed in the our session or they can be the mix and match or combination of these structures. So, that as a concept are is still relevant for SCs and NPOs and they need to think creatively about how they choose the organization design, because ultimately it is a organization design is a vehicle to deliver their objectives. So, what might be the most suitable vehicle uh, to deliver the social object 
objecto or environment uh, well being related objectos that can be thought through about the SCs and ST and that knowledge of OD can be equally applicable in the SCs or SC and NPOs as it is uh, proved to be very useful in the commercial organizations. Uh, organization culture as it is very important in the commercial organizations, so it is very important in the SCs and NPOs. Organization culture you might remember we discussed in the previous session is about the way things are done. It is about shared values, beliefs, assumptions, uh, heroes, rituals, artifacts. Uh, these, these the shared aspects of the organization are reflected in the organization culture. That is a very important energy giving factor for organizational actors to pursue the valued organizational goals. So, the culture is very important uh, for SEs and NPOs as well managing the culture, developing right kind of culture where people enjoy working and they give their uh, full potential, they offer their full potential and they also develop their potential to realize their valued goals. So, the notion of organization culture is equally relevant and perhaps more relevant and more important in SEs and NPOs in comparison to uh, commercial organizations. SEs and NPOs like commercial organizations also need to take care of their organizational life and how they manage their organizational life cycle and what are the different management techniques they need to apply to keep them effective, to keep them growing and uh, keep them on the path of delivering their socially valued objectives and goals we discuss that different organizations go through different stages of life cycle. There is a uh, initiation, there is a growth phase, there is a decline phase and there are different strategies required to be implemented in the at the different stages of the organizational life cycle. Some of those things are relevant in the SCs and NPOs as well. For example, in the initiation phase organization has to set up systems and processes. Without that, they will find it very difficult to manage the growth if it comes on their way. That principle is equally applicable in SCs and NPOs. When organization reach to certain level of operation where it is required to bring more professionally trained manpower and managers, that factor is equally applicable in the SCs and NPOs. They also need to hire some people who might not be uh, the uh, founding members who uh, are professionally trained to handle the growth of their operations, growth of their activities. And like in the commercial organization, they have to launch new services, new product, they have to uh, create the new story, they need to engage with their stakeholders differently when they see a decline in their activities. So, this principle about managing organizational cycle, managing along with the organizational cycle is equally applicable in commercial organizations as well as uh, SEs and NPOs. Some of the major OD interventions in NPOs and SEs uh, can be uh, as follows. First is creation of positive lasting change in the well being of the society through partnerships and collaborations and not competitive orientation. SEs and NPOs do not have to win competition generally because they are towards the enhancing the well being of the society. They are chasing the social goals and uh, particularly in country like India, there is no limit to uh, realize the social goals means there is a lot to be done in our society in terms of the education, health care, general well being. And, and so many uh, uh, human quality related goals. So, there is no point in operating from the competitive perspective, but SEs and NPOs need to develop their competencies and that is a very important area for the competency development and that uh, and the OD interventions can be geared up towards uh, developing those uh, capabilities uh, and those are in uh, forging the partnerships and collaboration. Uh, that can be with other NGOs, 
maybe with the commercial organizations because CSR is a very important aspect and most of the big corporations uh, carry out their CSR activities through their foundations and generally those foundation uh, take forward the work of CSR in collaboration with various NGOs. So, there is uh, there is a huge chance, there is a great scope to collaborate with these foundations and uh, in those collaborations SEs and NPOs not only get resources, but they can also uh, get the management expertise, they can also uh, get the uh, orientation towards technical prowess, they can uh, look at the different ways of organization design, many many management related things which we discussed just now, uh, they can have a practical exposure to those things. So, forging collaboration and, and partnerships is a very important OD intervention for the SEs and NPOs. Next intervention is related to introducing systemic changes and introducing those changes by involving multiple stakeholders. What Wiesbord says getting the whole system in the room, having stakeholders from different constituencies, having as many stakeholders as possible being represented in the process of dialogue that is a very important intervention uh, for the SEs and NPOs because anyway they have to operate within the society or community where there are multiple stakeholders and their perspective is very important and becomes sometimes crucial to help the SEs and NPOs to realize the social goals. So, uh, getting the whole system in the room that principle uh, which is applied in many OD intervention like future search conferences and uh, appreciate inquiry, these things are valuable, these OD interventions can be equally valuable uh, in the SEs and NPOs. Third intervention can be which is more at the individual level is about uh, promulgating the values to humanize the work. We know that SEs and NPOs do not give the financial incentives to their members which can be comparable to the commercial organizations. Nonetheless, creating a very positive culture is equally important or perhaps more important in, th in these kind of organizations. So, they need to have the OD intervention which is aimed at humanizing the workplace uh, organizations and society, it, uh, they need to have the orientation uh, to enhance the uh, employees ability to balance work and life, uh, they need to work on promoting diversity or sometime even enhancing the spirituality at workplace. They need to champion uh, the self actualization of the organizational members and for that they need to choose the appropriate OD interventions. So, here we see that there is a commonality and there is a difference in the objectives of the uh, non-commercial organizations uh, in terms of the OD interventions. They operate sometime with different objectives and uh, they need a specific type of OD intervention or the OD intervention need to be informed by the special situations or the culture they operate with. Uh, so, those things have to be taken care of while doing the OD intervention in the SEs, NPOs or even the healthcare organizations which we discussed uh, in the earlier part of this session. Having said that there is a lot which uh, uh, healthcare organizations, uh, social, uh, social enterprises and non-government organizations or not non-for-profit organizations can learn from the commercial organization, from the OD interventions and approaches developed in the commercial organizations. So, here we end um, the last session of this course on uh, OD interventions in the non-industrial sectors. Thank you.